Hello, I'm Jeff, and welcome to Snap Talk, where we talk about things that either may not make the podcast or we run out of time and can't quite get all our thoughts in on it. In case you haven't been following along on Sid Alpha's or Leonard French's channels, we have a gaming controversy brewing. It started about a month ago when a composer named Alex Maurer started issuing copyright strikes on YouTube as well as a claim on Steam for a game called Star Mazer DSP. The reason she did this is because she feels she was owed some sort of back pay from the game's developer, Imigo Softworks. Obviously, this is the wrong way to go about it, as she technically has no rights to the game, and it has been shown that she signed a contract where the rights to her music and sound effects for the game would go to the developer. Which is all pretty standard stuff. Which means, at this point, Miss Maurer has perjured herself in filing these false DMCA claims. The whole story is pretty fascinating, and you should check out Sid Alpha's vlogs to learn more about it. You can check the link in the description below since it seems that no major site has picked up on the story. Until now. So far, there have been roughly two articles about the situation going on. Or at least, the tail end of the situation. A specific part about the situation, that being a different game getting taken down due to the actions of Miss Mauer. That being River City Ransom Underground. Destructoid was first to cover it, with Jonathan Holmes writing the piece. Holmes was apparently informed about, it, about the game being removed from Steam. And after doing some research, he went and published... something not unlike a news article that missed the mark in a number of ways. Now, going through it myself, it seems like he was trying to write something about just this particular incident. Which is just a smaller event in a much larger story. So going by that, it's okay up until he gets near the end. We'll get to that in a sec. Now first he goes and he and he, talk, he initially starts off talking about how the game was removed and then gets a quote from Miss Mauer, all fine right there and and then he goes and mentions I'll buy it briefly what happened with her and Imagos, even bringing up Leonard French, who will be representing the developer thanks to donations to a GoFundMe page. Link also in the description. But then near the end, it seems that Jonathan Holmes wants to write it in a way where Miss Maurer seemed to be the only one being harassed in this entire situation. Granted, it is happening. I'm not going to deny that it's happening. But it also misses a key component to this entire thing in that Miss Maurer seems to be harassing those involved as well. In particular, she has apparently sent death threats to both Sid Alpha and Leonard French, as well as doxed her now former lawyer, and has even essentially affected the lives of at least a hundred YouTubers with DMCA strikes for not just Star Mazer DSP, but attempted strikes on Death Road to Canada, and of course, River City Ransom Underground. Now it should be noted that the claims for Death Road to Canada on Steam was rejected, however River City Ransom is currently down as developer Konatas has opted to switch any music and sound effects she did for the game. Now, the article was originally posted on Destructoid's front page, but has since been removed from that and placed exclusively just on Holmes's blog and has not only been updated by the chief editor of the website, but it has also been updated a number of times by Mr. Holmes. Both times seem to be a sort of partial mea culpa for his attacks, specifically the line, Ambulance Chasing YouTube Pundits. He specifically apologizes, apologized to Sid Alpha, music, musical anti-hero, and even Leonard French. In a later update, he added a link to a Silicon Era article in which they still just covered the River City Ransom Underground removal from Steam, but seemed to have done so in a more professional news type manner i.e. not attacking those that were actually bringing attention to the subject. Now it seems off to me that I have to explain how to write a news article to someone that has been doing this at least seven years more than I ever did. I mean, 
This is a major site. You're getting paid for this, right, Jonathan? I mean, when I worked at Op Rainfall, yeah, I wasn't getting paid for it. But I made sure I actually did my homework beforehand, whenever I wrote anything. And frankly, my homework would not include, quote, some digging around Twitter. You see, it's that sort of workmanship that makes people not trust the media these days. Had you actually went and did some legitimate journalism, something that you seem to have made a career out of, you would have known the context of what was going on. Quite frankly, seeing someone write news like this makes me wonder how they ended up getting the paying gig. But of course, Destructoid's not the only one that has uh, picked up on, at the very least, this small part of a much larger story. Of course, I mentioned Silicon Era. There was also Ars Technica, who originally ran with a story by Kyle Orland. He has since updated it with information that Maurer has uh, made a slew of DMCA requests against YouTubers covering both our, uh, River City Ransom Underground as well as Star Majors or DSP in an update that also included a comment from developer Conatus, the developers behind River City Ransom Underground, in which they were going to change the soundtrack of the game. And while I think Orland did a disservice to the events that have been going on the past month, I will at least give him this. It looks like a professional news piece. It looks like someone who actually understands what journalism is. As for Mr. Holmes, I will end this with how he ended his initial post. Hopefully, there is a way everyone can walk away from this situation with a fair and mutually beneficial outcome, end quote. I think the time for there being a situation for a fair and mutual beneficial outcome ended a while back. If you knew the context of this beforehand, you would have known that this pretty much will be it for Alex Maurer in the video game industry unless she signs a contract that is about as long as the U.S. Constitution and probably equally as legaleased and boring. Now, I would say something to Miss Maurer about how I think she needs mental help, which if she's listening, I would like to say, Miss Maurer, please seek mental help. But instead, I will do this. Mr. Holmes, you are journalistically unwell. You need professional journalistic help. Please listen to what the journo doctor has to say, and if prescribed, take the meds. They were made to help you. In doing so, you will help all of us seek a fair and mutually beneficial outcome from this situation. And that is it for this episode of Snap Talk. If you liked what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, and share with others. If you have a different opinion to what was stated, feel free to comment down below and we can talk about it. If you have an idea for another Snap Talk, leave a suggestion below. And if I feel like I can get enough material together, I may talk about it in a future episode. The featured game today is 2012's Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, a sequel to Gianna Sisters DS, and a successor to the Commodore 64 game, The Great Gianna Sisters, which may or may not have had a lawsuit of its own. Created by Black Forest Games, the game is a platformer that you, has you play as Gianna, who has the ability to switch between cute and punk personas, which allows for different moves to be performed. I personally enjoy the gameplay quirk and liken it to games like Fractured Soul and Chronos Twins. You can find the game on Xbox Live Arcade, the PlayStation Network, the Nintendo eShop on Wii U, as well as various PC platforms such as GOG.com and Steam. I'm Jeff from Some Dirty Arguments, and I'll talk to you soon.